G'day, Steve Gurney here, Beginner's Guide to Adventure Sport. And we're talking specifically about chapter four here, orienteering and navigation. So I want to start by saying you don't always need to use a compass when you're navigating. As long as you've got a really good accurate map and you can read where you are on the map, you can see the features around you, then you should be able to figure out your direction and your route from just the terrain and the features. However, there's sometimes when it's useful to use a compass. For example, if it's dark, or if there's a fog coming, or if you're in a big forest, high canopy, and you can't see the, the features and terrain around you. And also in adventure races, often we're gonna depart from the track and we'll be going on a compass bearing to get to our destination. So it's useful to know how to use a compass at times. So let's talk about the compass. So the first thing to know is that the little needle on here, it's always pointing to magnetic north because that little needle is magnetized. Okay, so let's talk about compasses. So the primary function of a compass is that it has a little magnetic needle that will always point to magnetic north. The other parts of a compass are that um, it has, well this is a base plate compass which has a base plate of the rectangular piece. It has a bezel which you rotate and that's for setting a bearing and you read the bearing up here at the top. And it also has a direction of travel arrow which is of course the direction that we travel once we've set our bearing. Okay, I can hear you asking, what is magnetic north and what's the difference? So remember we talked about the, the little needle in the compass here, it's always pointing to magnetic north. There is a difference between that and grid north. And so to explain that, I need to talk about the globe. So I've got a globe here. Woohoo! Oh, wrong globe, sorry. Here's a globe of the Earth. Right, so here's the North Pole and here's the South Pole and here are grid lines, so they connect the north to the south poles and back again. And here's New Zealand down here. Now the difference is magnetic north isn't quite in line with this. Magnetic north is a magnetic force field that's just under the sur surface of the earth and it's out near Greenland which, out, which is out here. So if you're in New Zealand, magnetic north is slightly to the east of grid north which is north to south. So this compass the needle always points slightly to the east. In New Zealand, it's about 23, 23 degrees to the east of grid north. And so, um, I, and that changes a wee bit too, by the way, that the 23 degrees is slightly less if you're on the North Island and slightly more if you're on the South Island. And over the years, it increases slightly by about half a degree. But 23 degrees is pretty accurate. It's enough, uh, enough for our navigation here. Magnetic declination, grid north, how does that affect us with our navigation? Well, when it comes to maps, there's, oh, we want to use topographical maps in our adventures. And so these are two maps that have grid north drawn on them. So this, is, this here is a map I've brought with great detail on it. It's got scales and all sorts of things. It's even got magnetic declination marked on here. And this is one I bought from the Department of Conservation office, at like a shop. This is one I've printed off my computer, Fresh Map, and they both have Grid North drawn on them. There's another topographical map that's uh, printed by an orienteering club for an orienteering event or a Rogaine event. This one's of an area in Canterbury called Acheron, and it's the Peninsula and Plains Orienteering Club. And what's different here is instead of Grid North lines, they've drawn Magnetic North lines. So when I'm using my compass on here, it's really quick. I don't have to make an adjustment of 23 degrees. So we can be a bit clever. If we're doing an event and we want to be able to read our maps quickly, we can make one of these normal topographical maps with grid north lines on them. We can convert that to the shortcut version like an orienteering map. And it reduces the chance of us making an error too, you know, if we're, if we're tired or it's dark and we've forgotten things. So this is how we do it. So we take a compass. And we know in New Zealand it's 23 degrees for magnetic declination, so I set 23 degrees on my bezel there. So there's 23 degrees. And then I get my map. And I line up these orienting lines on the bezel with grid north on the map. And then I can draw along the 
base plate edge with my pen and that'll be magnetic declination lines. And I can do it even quicker if I get a ruler like this and I line it up with the edge of the compass and then I draw the lines across my map like that. And on the other side and I can draw lots of them across here. And I've chosen a red pen which is different than the grid lines so I know that that's the, the red is the magnetic lines. And here's another thing for beginners. It's very easy to get your map upside down accidentally so I put an arrowhead to show, show that's north. North is also the way that the writing is written. It's always up facing north if you hold the map so you can read the writing. But just to make sure I draw arrowheads on my magnetic lines. And there we have it. So all I need to do when I'm taking a bearing is use those magnetic lines and I don't have to make an adjustment for magnetic declination. So if you want to know how to do that, check out the video on taking a bearing. Woohoo! Oh, wrong bloke.